so much going on in the truck world. There he is. Hey guys, this is Andre with the Fastlane Truck and Kent with MrTruck.com. And this is Talking Trucks because it's Thursday. We always try to do these shows on Thursdays. Yeah. So are, where have we been these past couple of weeks? We are live and last couple yeah. last week we were in, in Texas. In Texas Dallas. State Fair, all the big news there with Ford yes. and Nissan and we missed a week before that too. We've been gone a long time. Yes, yeah, so we apologize about that. Obviously, we do a couple of shows a week, and uh, but uh, on top of this show, um, we're going to touch on some uh, diesel questions. Right. Well, you were in uh, prison, weren't you, for a while? Did you go to jail me? for a week or no, two? No, no, I, I oh. was never in prison. Okay. I was in Siberia once, but Siberia, uh, that, you that really? Wasn't, that wasn't the prison. Wow. Um, but we want to talk about half-ton diesels a little bit because okay. there's a lot of news coming out about this. Right? Yes. Yes. Um, and also, we want to take your questions and comments. So please uh, get your questions going. Yeah. <laughs> you know, diesels, what I was saying yeah. about diesels, Yes. like 15 years ago, we were excited. We were pumped. We were ready for all those, those you know, everybody had a, an idea of a diesel, baby Duramax, baby Power Strokes, baby Cummins. It was all kinds of cool yes. stuff. And then now, you know, it took so long for that to actually happen that it's kind of like, oh, hum now, except if you're getting some good fuel mileage on some of these. Yes. I mean, right now you got Chevy, a two wheel drive. That's very good. Yeah. And those diesels cost, you know, about half of what a full-size diesel does. And a full-size diesel, of course, does more work and does all that, but it takes longer to pay the 10, 11,000 off than it does the four to 5,000. Yeah. So it, it can make sense in the half tons. Right, it can. And we have a picture of the 2020 Ram 1500 here because uh, there's some news coming next week, right? About yeah. its official EPA ratings. Right, the EPA comes out uh, next week. We don't have the numbers. We cannot tell you the numbers now. It'll be next week. Can we just like whisper it to them? No, we cannot whisper it okay. because it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, right now it's not available. But um, we did our own MPG loop with this truck, right? Yeah, it's caused a lot of controversy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, we had to dip fuel out. It was just like coming out of the tank. So, no, much. so what happened was, if you, haven't, if you haven't seen it, you probably have, and you probably already sent us email about this. Uh, but we did a towing run with a 7,000 pound trailer, Yeah. and we did an empty run on our highway loop, 198 right. miles. And the trailer did with what, 12 miles a gallon? 12.4. 12.4. And we already that told was, you about this, but, yeah, but the empty normal. number was 40. It was insane. MPG. Yeah, it was we, crazy we were good. all jumping up and down, couldn't figure that out, so we're still kind of confused. <laughs> uh, but we're going to redo right. it. So we're getting the truck back at, at last week of October and also the new Duramax straight six. So we're going to show you a comparison so you can see both trucks together. Oh, that would be good. And on the highway. So that's going to be important. And we're actually doing this before the EPA. So I'm really excited about this. For the EPA on Ram. Yeah, that was yeah. what got me excited because usually the MPGs put me to sleep. Going really? down the highway and just going down the highway you know, miles. You know what else puts you but to I, sleep? But I actually got, got excited over this Ram deal. What? We did? Yeah. You know what else puts you to sleep? Sales numbers. Oh, sales you numbers. Love, <laughs> you love sales, right? <laughs> These are all, stuff, all the classes I avoided in school, you know, like math and... <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, I mean, I mean, it, it's good to have this information. I'm really proud of, of uh, TFL Truck on how they do test these trucks with traders because nobody else does, and EPA sure doesn't. So those are variable numbers that just don't always want to be the ones sitting in a truck for two hours, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I think our towing numbers are actually. We need a robot to do that test. Well, soon the trucks are going to drive themselves, right? There you go. And we can just ask the computer, well, what did you get? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, also we have, of course, it was Jamie Shields is here, and by the way, guys, thank you for joining us. Uh, Jamie Shields um, says, D do you post uh, your MPG in liters per 100 kilometers uh, from, uh, from the Australian magazine? Well, we do not, but we do have Stephen Elmer, who is in our Canadian bureau chief. Yeah, he can convert it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we could all convert it, uh, but, the, but the thing is, um, uh, he also does MPG testing up there. Yeah, sure. So he sure. recently did a mega cab on this channel, yeah. a Ram, Ram Heavy Duty. So we're doing a lot of testing. And um, by the way, Australia, Canada, and US, some um, specifications may differ, right? So yeah. different regulations. Right. Um, so it may be a slightly different. Yeah, the leaders is a weird thing to figure out. Well, it used to be like metrics on tools. You know, we had the, what are they called, the English metric, and we had like the Asian metric. So I know the bolts sometimes were different from Asia than they were from, you know, Europe. Wow, you're blowing me away. So right I'm wondering there. if that's how their leaders and fuel yes. and all that is, because it's, that's why I like the good old American gallon thing. I like gallons. I like quarts. Um, I like ounces. This, this Nathan Adlin uh, person says, uh, I, I need to look under my computer. 
What in the world is under your oh, computer? Oh, uh, no, uh, Zach has it. Oh, can you bring it over? Oh, uh, I think. Is there cuss words on that thing? Uh, I think um, <laughs> Nathan Nathan no, did something. It's you for yourself, Andre. So, um, Nathan wants this to. So, do you want to take the first question? What is that? It's like Johnny Carson, where he puts the envelope to his head and says what's oh, in you it. You cover up that part of the note. Anyway, yeah, I have. The inappropriate part I have. Of the note that was from Nathan? <laughs> oh, and Nathan, I think somebody left a note said, Andre, uh, up yours. And what's well, it? I can't read what says Mr. Truck. It says uh, love Mr. Truck. There love you go. Mr. Now, that, that's Nathan. Nathan's a wonderful human being. You know, no matter how many toes he has, he's a wonderful human being. I love him to death. Uh, okay. But he's a so, great guy. So love you, Nathan. Thank you, He's Nathan. And Juan Catalina says thanks, and uh, <laughs> really appreciate you guys joining. Um, Boney Chug, Dan Atkinson, thank you guys. Look, Nathan's so, on the thing. He says, hi, Ron. Look at that. He just kind of shows up wherever you think. Talk about Nathan. Look at that. He's all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's take a first. Nathan is a guest here. Get oh, away, um, we'll Zach, should we touch on sales a little bit, or do you think that's just kind of a spent? I don't know. If you want to put Mr. Truck to sleep <laughs> over there, you can touch on it. Yeah, let's get some sales numbers. I always wonder. If they went up another car or two in this quarter. Did you know that <laughs> Ram uh, full-size trucks outsold Chevrolet full-size trucks in the third quarter again? That's been going off and on for a couple yeah, of years now. Yeah, it's been going on. I hope but that then, tells them something that, you know, get the marketing, guys. You know, we've already got the truck wars, the diesel wars, the MPG wars, all that. Let's get the marketing wars yes. and have GM catch back up. I mean, they used to be on top of that. Ram's got great marketing team. Ford's got a great marketing team. I worry about Nissan. I worry about GM, man. Going to have to get some of them young punks out of school, right out of college, that know something about marketing. And let's get some numbers whoa, whoa, going up Whoa, chicken here. time. Chicken time. Because, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Bizerman19, $10. Uh, great channel. Thank you for your support. Um, of course, for 10 bucks you can get a sticker. Uh, for 25 you can, you can get a, a patch. For 50 bucks a hat. And for... 200 bucks, 199. Holy cow! You can get our new, uh, our latest limited edition hoodies, and with uh, the winter on our noses, um, yeah. this is very useful. I was yeah. wearing it this morning. You know, you guys should buy these, wear them to SEMA if you can get in the SEMA, <laughs> or walk around outside because they have a place outside. You don't have to get yes. a thing to get in it, and then we'll notice you. We'll see you. We'll we'll video you. We'll ask you questions. We'll but, sign your coat. By the way. Speaking of SEMA, thank you for bringing this up. It's because TFL Truck is going to be there. Yes. And we're going to be at the Shell um, Experience booth. Oh, um, I know and, those guys. That's and, that bald, big, tall guy that had that show out of Texas. He's always on that booth. They have two booths. Shell oh, yeah, has yeah. one south and one north. Yeah. And that guy so, that did that show on uh, Veracity Forever is always on that one north one. He's one of the hosts, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're going to be there on Tuesday and Wednesday. So this is November 5th and 6th. Um, and the, the, on Tuesday, we're going to be there in the afternoon from 4 p.m. on yeah. uh, till about 5. And on Wednesday, we're going to be there in the morning between like 10 and noon. Cool. So if you're in the Vegas area and you want to stop by, this is outside, by the way, not inside. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I cannot get you into SEMA, Carlos. I'm sorry. Um, it's kind of an industry show still. So indoors, yeah. you have to be either media or industry. Right. And Kent and Kelsey will be there. And we'll be inside. <laughs> okay. And I'll be outside hanging out. Uh -huh. um, for those times, so so thank you. Um, should we hit Alex's question? Because I think yes. Alex here Alex. Has, a, has a really interesting question. He's got as two well. questions. Yes. First part is how does the shape of the trailer affect your fuel economy? And we've touched on this a little bit before, but but uh, what's your take on this? Why well, I'm lining up a test with uh, with Transwest, our, our sponsor on our trailer side. Yeah. And they have two Cimarron traders. One's got a, a fairly normal rounding nose, and one's like a really big V shape. And they've done their own test, and it came out astronomical, you know, 10, 15 percent better. So we're going to, sometime in this winter, we're going to get both trucks, get two traders identical, and get the same weight going, and, and try to do a, 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 a playoff there of how much better that V-nose does. We know it's anything yeah. more aerodynamic helps. Yeah. And some, some, you know, these box traders, like you see with cargo traders and with car haulers, they got a fully flat nose. And we've done that before. Use the flat nose. Now we Absolutely. use more of a of a rounding nose on yeah. these horse traders. But they've got one that's like a super MPG trader, and, I, and and that's cool. And I've seen even Hart back in the old days when they had the big rounding nose. They put a fiberglass nose on it and shaped it a little differently, and it yeah. did increase it much much better. And and I know some horse traders that put wings on the back that improve fuel mileage and stability. So well, that's there's crazy. a lot of things that can help. And I think as fuel if if fuel prices go up, uh, for yeah. example, uh, later this year or next year. Uh, I think it'd be worthwhile doing because uh, Roman and you and I actually and all of us talked about this. 
if we can run the same loop with different yeah. trailers right. uh, or on the same day, we can show you guys kind of the data. Yeah, and they'll have um, the traders. Friends West is trying to line that up for us so we have those traders, but yeah. that's exactly true. And, you know, it's really weird is what's worse is side wind. You know, I drive, I just got back from Texas. I drive all over the place in these trailers. And that side wind will just, even without a trailer, it does weird things to the trucks. But that's, which is kind of weird, going to like the weight distributing hitches, if even the heavy duty trucks, you put a weight distributing hitch with sway control, they handle the wind much better. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know the half tons need it, but yeah. there's, there's times, and Chevy did that one event we went in, in, there in, your, in Oregon, where they put weight distributing hitches on their heavy duties. Uh -huh. And I was impressed by that. And that's, that's there's several things you've got to look at if you're trying to control these traders on the road. But yeah, wind, re wind resistance is one of them. Yeah, and uh, obviously a lot of people actually asking us to do this testing. Um, what is the discussion about RC trucks, Zach or um, Tommy? Uh, can you help me out? Uh, Radio controlled trucks? Is that what you're saying? Who wants to see a diesel in an RC truck? Well, see a really tiny diesel engine. What about electric? Oh, they're all electric. Uh, well, well, some. <laughs> There's, there's well, some well, of their some, engine, of them, some of the airplanes have engines in them. Yeah. I mean, some yeah. of them have little <laughs> tiny uh, nitro engines. Nitro engines. engines. Like, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, Nitro fuel. You want to see a diesel one? Well, if you build it, they will come. You know what's yeah. funny though? Actually, yeah. even like, the gas ones are, are, are technically diesels because they don't have a spark plug. So you warm up a glow plug and then it just runs off compression. So those little tiny ones? Yeah, those little nitro engines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there yeah. you go. Diesel engines go. exist in RCs. Yeah. So, yeah. so thank you for that. Did we get to number two on Alex's question? Shape well, of the vehicle? I guess they were all kind of blending together there. Shape of the vehicle. How does that affect? Um, on the trailer being towed. Specifically, uh, yeah. he's asking like towing with an SUV versus towing with a pickup. Oh, I see. Well, that's what they used to say about pickup trucks. You put a tonneau cover, it can save you 10%. GM has talked about that for years. You put a camper shell and you might improve it too. That's what a, an SUV, big, big SUV would be like a truck with a camper shell on it. I think it would help. It's just like the difference between a gooseneck and a bumper pole. And I've done this test many times. You can take like one horse bigger gooseneck and get you the same fuel mileage and towing as a two horse bumper pull. Because bumper uh -huh. pulls, you know, the air goes over the cab, down into the bed, up over the tailgate, and hits the face of the trailer. Yeah, so where it hits it, it several times. Yeah, so yeah. where there's a gooseneck, it's closer to, and it's closer to get the gooseneck to the roof of the truck, the better. You know, there's different aerial wings you can put up there. Yeah, but, some people put yeah. wings on top. So yeah. a gooseneck can be dramatically better on fuel mileage. Even and, if it's and, heavier. Yeah, yeah. And it's, okay. Yes. And, and so, you know, I, I've compared a three-horse to a two-horse. Three-horse gooseneck versus two-horse bumper pull. And that's what I've concluded. And, I, and that was interesting. But, yeah, aerodynamics, I mean, you look at semis now. They've got all kinds of wings above yeah, the they sleeper. Do. They've got wings underneath the bed. They've got little shields over the tires. And they've got little wings in the back, the, the, the yeah, boat tail in the back. And for a while, Texas, or not Texas, California was requiring all that stuff from better fuel mileage. And now they're, you know, in, te in California, they're requiring, they got to go to a newer diesel. They're, they're, you know, they've been doing it at the ports for years, keep getting rid of the older diesels. Now they're almost making it to where, you know, you can't even have a diesel. Yeah, people are using on, like on Toyota. big semis, yeah. Yeah, Toyota semis. is doing like fuel cell trucks, yeah, electric yeah. trucks. They keep uh, coming chicken out Time with... from oh. Gustavo. Um, Gustavo donated two dollars Canadian, so thank cool. you very much. There are a lot of people who are still asking us to retest the Eco Diesel, uh, like we said at the beginning of the show. Yes, we will. Yeah, um, yeah. Last week of October, we will retest it together with the Duramax Straight Six. Um, so while we're on that subject, yes, um, I choose us ask the question: Will Toyota ever bring the diesel out of the Hilux into the U.S.? And I think that's a good segue, kind of into the broader theme like the uh, topic for the show the headline for the show is mm -hmm. are half ton diesels in their death throes in this generation will yeah. they keep going why hasn't toyota brought a diesel to the u.s will they ever do it or Let's, a nissan nissan's not done the diesel well, yeah so in so the, there's in a the few questions XP, here the, nis the diesel's going away yeah yeah, yeah gone so the away. five liter v8 Cummins has been discontinued after this year right so nobody's the, got them but the, the big three out of detroit right so so this is pretty interesting and especially the toyota question because um, um i was fortunate enough to be in australia for a couple days recently and most of the pickup trucks there are diesel. And these are mostly Hilux sized vehicles uh, or Land Cruisers, which are a little smaller than our half tons yeah, yeah. Uh, or heavy duty trucks, but they're still very capable, very, a lot of payload. Uh, obviously, regulations have to do a lot with it, right? Yeah. Australia yeah. regulations are a little bit more friendly towards the diesel engine. 
Um, the United States is now tightening down. Still, yeah, yeah. Still on their and diesel Europe, Europe's big on it too because it saves them some fuel. Over so there and, and also, thermal, thermal also on tuning, there was a recent subject about tuning diesel engines, right? Yeah. Uh, so what people used to do is delete delete uh, their trucks, which means removing the DEF systems or the uh, yeah. regen systems or the particulate filter systems. Right. Uh, removing them from the trucks and then tuning their trucks. Well, that's no longer. Well, it was never legal, but now the regulations are kind of tightening down on that even further. Right. Well, yeah, especially in the front range here in the cities. But I know a lot of people in Kansas or the, you know, way out in the country, that, that was a normal thing to get rid of all that. I mean, we used to take catalytic converters off in the 70s because so, of the fires so, they caused. But so yeah. where is this going? Like in the next gen, I don't see Toyota bringing a diesel engine. There are rumors that they won't for the next Tundra or the next Tacoma. That's true. Um, there is information, not official information, but still some rumors that they will not, that they're going more towards hybrids, yeah. more towards gas, uh, turbocharged engines. Um, and I think it's interesting that big three have just recently introduced their new diesels. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah finally. But maybe, yeah. like we were saying, maybe it's a little bit too late. Maybe the regulations in the world is just too hard on that type of technology. Yeah, and I think they're all going to have to do like what GM has got, 33 miles a gallon. That makes a big difference versus, say, 25, 23, like my truck. But a lot of those gas trucks will get, you know, 25. And so I think you got to be closer to that mid-30s for those diesels to survive because the, the price is right. And, you know, and there's a lot of economic facts that will make those half-tons work. But now you got electric engines coming. you got cell, whatever that is, fuel, hydrogen. Fuel cell, yeah. Yeah, all that stuff's coming. So it's, it's like it's like the internet. Things move so fast, and these truck manufacturers they try to keep up with that. But you know, when everybody else, when, when all those electric companies actually have a truck, whether it's Tesla or whether it's uh, Rivian or uh, Bollinger, yeah. I mean, there's going to be quite a few of them. Once they actually are all on the market, it'll put a lot of pressure on those diesel Model X, right? The battery, Tesla the battery towing. situation. And yeah. we really our range suffered so much. We lost about <laughs> you know triple the amount of energy we were using, yeah. rather than not towing. So. It seems like the electric technology for towing for trucks is not quite there yet. Yeah, they got to have an infrastructure. I mean, you got Tesla with little charging stations all over the country, but not, not, not a whole lot of other ones. Some cities have it because they're promoting electricity in the city. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of things that have to happen. And so that means that those half ton diesels have a shot. If they can all get up in that mid 30s or so, whatever technology they got to use, I mean, that, that's. Without being too expensive. That, right. That will yeah. save them if they can. The better their fuel mileage, the longer they'll. They'll have with those in the market is what I think, but um. yeah, and uh, people are talking about like different companies um, um, partnering together, like GM partnered with Isuzu originally on the Duramaxes. Um, obviously, Ram has purchased um, VM Matori, which is an uh, Italian manufacturer yeah, of diesels. Right. Ford manufactures or designs their own engines. Yeah, in Britain. Um, so, so th there's different things going on here. Um, and I, a lot of like DJ uh, Pelio is asking um, EcoDiesel, is it coming back into the Grand Cherokee Jeep? I actually don't know. Yeah, uh, we don't have any uh, official word from Jeep on that. Yeah, no official word, but uh, what is coming is the diesel Wrangler. Yeah. And Jeep made a statement in Texas that uh -huh. the diesel Gladiator is still coming next year. Uh huh. So, so there's some good news if you like diesel engines in your Jeeps. Uh, the Wrangler and the Gladiator will have it. The Wrangler comes out within a couple months, and then Gladiator will be after mm -hmm. that. Um, and Roman will be driving a diesel Wrangler in November. Yeah. So we'll we'll see that. Well, you know that Rex or Rexord, that little Jeep, little SUV thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing is diesel. That's yeah. the way it comes. And it's got a manual so, transmission. Yeah, too. I mean that's the old the old Jeeps from World War II, and that's an interesting concept. But uh, yeah, I mean you get better range with diesel. There's a lot of we all love diesels, but sometimes they make sense, sometimes they don't. Yeah, but you know that's that's where it is, and I don't know resale value on half tons. I know on heavy duties it's really good, but what is it on half tons? The resale value. Not that there's a lot of them out there, but I hardly see any Fords. So well, it's I don't a know. weird subject because Ram Eco diesels, the used ones, are have a different thing going on. Well, yeah, they, they were got, recalled. Yeah, some EPA problems. Yeah. Right. So, and yeah. actually, um, I did a video. I filmed a video with two old Eco di older Eco diesels, 2014 and 2015 because a lot of people were mentioning how they got slower oh, right. after the recall. Right. So that video is still coming. Um, it hasn't been published yet, uh, but we're trying to do real world testing with the older engine too. So it's hard to say about um, resale. Yeah. But uh, like David N is saying, since electric trucks are not in their prime yet, 
uh, he, his opinion is that diesels will stick around because of that. Well, I, th I think he's probably Cause, right. Because you have to bridge the gap, right? Yeah, exactly. Somehow, somehow yeah. before the electrics come on. It'll take mainstream on those electrics for them to really hurt things. So and by now the there's a chance. I mean, I, I, I really respect GM for having a diesel out there that's 33 miles to the gallon. And it was a clean sheet design. Yeah, they did and, the and design. And it's torquey six cylinder. So I'm. There, there's some good things happening on there. I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I think Ford needs to do a few things yes. to get back in that market. But uh, anyway, uh, next question. Uh, we can just keep moving with the chat room and also hear from Patrick. Prepared question that we received at ask at tfltruck.com. Yeah, and this one relates to diesels too. Yeah. So with all the upping of the horsepower and torque and greater towing capabilities, is the rest of the truck keeping up? So the big news last week was the Ford, 2020 Super Duty. Yeah, 37,000 pounds. That's a good point because, you know, we talked about this before when Chevy came out with that 35,500. And I was asking all these engineers, okay, now you got all these giant numbers. Do we have, did we go from 10 ply tires to 12 ply or something? Do we go to bigger tires? And they're saying no. And then you made the good point that the GVW still stays around 14,000 mm -hmm. so they can get by with using those other tires. Me, it scares me to death. But if you're going to be pulling like what the new Super Duty is. 37,000? 37, and that's on the 4,500, uh, the 450 yeah. two-wheel drive single cab. So it's the lightest truck they have in that department. Then, you know, if you're going to do that, I'm, 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 they've got a truck trailer of mine that I helped them get that's a double axle 40,000 GVW. And I'm starting to think that if we're going to get that much weight, we're going to need, as much as I hate triple axles, we need three brake axles. We need electric over hydraulic. We need disc brakes. We need ABS. All that should fall in line. And the trader guys aren't, the trader manufacturers, they're, they're barely figuring out how to make a three inch ball and a three inch coupler for 30,000 pounds, because that's what that Ford had. Yeah. It had a 40 foot trader with a three inch ball and 40,000 GVW. And, you know, that, that 37,000 thing, that was yeah. actually made out of cement. You know, they, not they kept, paper? No, it, oh. it was really cement. And I'm thinking, holy cow, they kept telling me that. I'm going, really? But anyway. But that's still, it's Texas State Fair. You can see that trailer and that big 37,000. Yeah, 000. for another couple of weeks, right? Yeah, yeah, to the end of the show. But that's, uh, that's, so, that's true. I, I worry about that. I worry about the trailers because they're not keeping up because that's an economic thing. The truck guys are out there fighting each other for who's got the haul the most. But the trailer but, companies, they go with they, what they can sell volume in. And right now, I'm not so sure they can sell a volume 40,000 pound trailer. Because when I was looking for these trailers, I found three of them in Texas. I found one in Canada, and that's all I found. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's like so when, it's we test the, when we test those this fall. It's going to be hard. We're going to have a yeah. hard time finding something that's 35,000 pounds. You know, horse traders don't really go up there unless no. you go to a semi-type. So it, it's going to cause problems. And, you know, in Australia, they've been doing that for years. They've been using air brakes over 10,000 pounds on traders. They've been using a three-inch ball since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. So we're not even caught up to Australia yet. So, you know, it's... It's going to be interesting what these big numbers go to, but uh, you know, when is it going so, to stop? I don't, I don't know, but uh, you made a great point about not ma other manufacturers of hitches and trailers not keeping up with the truck manufacturer, which is true. Uh, EMD C55 has a comment in the chat room. Um, they say MPG isn't everything. Engines are so expensive and complicated these days, which is getting true. Mm -hmm. uh, look um, awesomely sim Look at uh, the 7.3 gas engine from Super Duty. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because it's more of a simple design. You know, it doesn't have turbochargers or particulate right, filters. Right. Um, it's not a real, you know, it's not a very complicated engine, which it's, is yeah, true. It's old school. It's push rod. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a great point. And it's because port injection. It's not even direct injection. It's port. Right. So, I mean, right? it's a basic um, engine. I mean, I can work on it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's but, an but, easy but. but that's a great point because when you buy that, you know, whatever your diesel truck is and something happens, like my old Duramax, the injectors went out. That yeah. was 4000 yeah. bucks. Oh, it's insane. It. So that's a really great point. Well, Don Atkinson has a good point here. He's talking about yep. running 17.5 wheels and brakes. Well, then that's what they use on those drop decks. But there's a lot of horse traders using 17.5 and 19.5. Uh -huh. They want a lower profile and they're getting 16 ply tires. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, we pull horse traders that are three axles that have 16 ply tires that are rated up around 30,000 pounds. But now we're going up to, you know, almost 40,000 pounds. So that's no, a good idea. You're going to have to look at that. And you know, and try to get those thicker sidewall tires on your trailer. And I, 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 I don't like triple axles, but I can see the point now because you know they they scruff a it's, lot going around corners. It's hard to turn. And we've got the trailers we've been using from Transwest, those Cimarrons that actually lift the back trailer out of three. Back axle. Back yeah. axle. And so when yeah. they lift that up, 
it turns the corners better. And so technology is there. ABS for these traders has been out for a long time. It's been mandatory. And Dan Atkinson can probably back me up on this. I think it was 1991 they made the semis have ABS on those trailers. And they have that little light in the back so mm -hmm. the cops can see if it works or doesn't work. And they went with air yeah. brakes. Yeah. yeah, and that's, that's ABS yeah. from 91. And here we are. What year this is? 19... Something. 2019 or something, <laughs> and we still don't have ABS on regular trailers, which they really need. It's a big difference in how they break. Yeah. So, yes, if we're going to go crazy on trucks, we better go crazy on trailers Yeah. and figure out the right configuration. It's going to keep me from getting killed on the highway when a truck goes out of control well, you're, coming you're, down the Ike. You're still here. I am. I'm, I, I, I'm fast. I can whip and duck and die between those trucks coming You're the me. fastest heavy duty <laughs> reporter I've ever seen. <laughs> um, Chris, uh, had a, uh, we received a question from Chris here. Um, he said, um, I really enjoyed your video about the diesel trucks and utes from Australia. Did they have the annoying blue DEF system installed? Um, I had an 81 Isuzu pickup truck, finally got rid of it with almost 500,000 miles on it. Look at that, um, miles per gallon. I did not open any fuel doors in Australia. So I didn't notice DF, um, DF uh, yeah. fluid um, did, fillers. Did you get a chance to drive that Raptor diesel out there? No. Did they never no, got one for no, you? No. Uh, next time. Well, what so, diesel did you look at out there? Well, I saw them on, on the street. There's oh, you saw the traffic full of diesel Hiluxes, they were diesel Toyotas, Rangers, huh? yeah. diesel, uh, anything you want to name it. There was VW Amarox with 4Motion yeah. um, and TDI engines. Well, yeah. There's even pickups from China there. Well, they're just like Wyoming. It's 100 miles from gas stations. You got to have some range. Whatever you buy, you got to have range. That's a sexy beast, by the way. Yeah. There this you is go. an older 70 series Land Cruiser wow. truck. It's got a, uh, it's got a 4.5 liter diesel. I've seen those beds too. Those are cool. Yeah, and that, actually, this is a trend. Well, in Australia, everybody has. Uh, is that tray where beds. the family rides in the back? Do yeah, yeah, yeah. Back there, um, but it's actually becoming a trend. Like, uh, remember uh, a few months ago, um, American Expedition Vehicles was putting a tray bed on a uh, bison. Yeah. Zero to bison yeah. Truck. So I think this trend is actually moving here. Where people like those utility beds with a crew cab, none of the yeah, single yeah, cab. Yeah, yeah, with a crew cab, uh, we don't like the single cab because yeah. where do you put the, your family? Well, yeah, you can't have the mother-in-law. We can call her in the back, I guess. Tie her up with duct tape to the headache <laughs> rack when you're ready to go. <laughs> but um, uh, what, what else? Are we, are we missing something in the? Um, Did you see the chapter? fuel mile? Chris said, "Look, he's getting 40, 41 miles per gallon on that Zuzu. That's incredible. Well, that was old. Yeah. Thing. Now he says he has a 2006 5.9 liter diesel. Dodge, it gets twenty a little over twenty five miles of the gallon highway when yeah. not towing. Well, that's pretty good. It's five nine. That's the old one. I mean, if it's old enough, yeah. it goes back to uh, a single. What is it? A single valve sediment instead of four valves, it's two valves. But his his question was. Those got better uh, fuel mileage. Where did the great MPG diesel performance numbers go? Seems we've gone backwards since the 1980s. That's true. That's people, true. There have been a lot of people in the comments talking about the uh, light duty diesels, saying that you know they're not going to do it. They're not going to take a chance with well, light duty diesels because of the added expense, because of complexity. Well, yeah. Complexity, yeah. So, and all the crap the EPA makes them put on. That's a big thing. There's so much thing that clog up your system and slow the airflow down. But, you know, I mean, that's what I say. But me and Nathan talked that about that many times. My old Chevy Love pickups, yeah. those old pickups back then, the Courier, a lot of those little, I call them motorized wheelbarrows because they're smaller than these midsize, but they all got good fuel mileage. And that's, you know, one of the reasons we had them. So now they don't. Like, you know, the Frontier you guys had for a year, the last Frontier, yeah. that didn't get exceptional fuel mileage. It was a four-banger on a well, King actually, Cab. Yeah, it wasn't exceptional, but it was like in the mid-20s as well. 25, For a which, little baby truck, though. I mean, yeah. yeah, it was kind of a baby truck, two-wheel drive. <laughs> uh, uh, here's an interesting question. What do you think of diesels, the old diesels that didn't have turbos? Okay. They were dogs. That's how you kill <laughs> mosquitoes. If you're going up the mountains <laughs> and you're climbing a hill, all that black coal just rolled out and killed all the mosquitoes. They were great. Mercedes was really important for that. <laughs> those, those 300s with that oh, turbos. Man, they killed, they killed all the mosquitoes in Colorado whenever they drove up the mountains. Ouch, ouch. And that's what they did. So that's the problem. You couldn't get rid of the soot. I mean, you, they were dirty. Yeah, the turbos were such a big deal when they came out. I, I, no, I don't, I don't know. No. And direct injection, well, all the things that he'd done to diesels, they're dramatically better. Just oh think my. about all the crap they put on them, and they're still powerful. Yeah, and they have all the cleaning, you know, post cleaning right. you know, Def systems, and, and they're still getting particulate it. filters. So there's a good question that just came across in the comments. Discuss 
A hybrid diesel that would cut emissions also. I have not heard a peep of a hybrid diesel. Yeah, why aren't manufacturers thinking about doing electrified diesels? That's a good two, question. Two, because uh, two answers? Oh, you got, you got, go ahead. I've got two know. answers. How okay. many answers do you got? I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> First, cost. Uh, okay. Diesel costs uh, money. Uh, hybrid and battery technology costs money. If you combine them two, um, you're getting a fairly costly solution. Yeah. Also, weight. So if you're adding a small battery or maybe a large battery yeah. to your truck and your diesel engine is already heavy, yeah. you're subtracting payload capacity. Well, that's true. That You get a lot of weight involved in that. My turn? Yeah. Okay. The one thing that I, I remember, because my diesel, my last diesel, which was that 2006 F-250, that puppy, we put CNG on it. I had okay. CNG. Yeah. It was a, uh, it wasn't an injection system. It was a draw. What's it called? Vacuum. Anyway, it sucked the the CNG into the cylinder, the into the engine. Yeah. And I was it's like getting, an additive kind of a helper. Yeah. And I was getting unbelievable fuel mileage with a trailer. It was so wonderful. And there is some companies. Well, Cummins has a West West Star, West Cliff, West something up in Canada that they do that too. And you know, the it actually runs on CNG. The diesel just lubricates things. But mine, I was running uh, it w with a trailer one to one, one CNG to one C to one gallon of diesel, and without a trailer, it was two to one, and it was incredible. But you could not get an EPA testing on that. The, the EPA was really restrictive on that, running the two different types of fuel. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of CNG kits you can put on gas, but you don't see them on diesels. No, I had I had, really, no, I had an no, underground no. one, man. We had to go underground in the dark. Well, aftermarket companies was, were doing it. It was hard yeah. to put on the dark. Yeah, yeah. But that, in the dark? You know, always, okay. we, we were undercover, man. But it was really cool, and it worked so well, and I loved that. And I gave it to my nephew, and he got arrested. No, he didn't get arrested. But he used it for years and years. Wow. But I think that that was an incredible thing, and that's you know similar to what we're talking about, diesel hybrid. This was like a diesel hybrid. It was diesel and, and CNG. And CNG costs nothing. I mean, I even had to go to Army boats sometime to fuel up because they were on the map. And so that was a little tricky back then getting. Now there's more CNG pumps around, but... That was fantastic, the power, the fuel That's mileage. Cool. Um, there's a couple of questions. So SRT5150 uh, has a few comments, so thank you for participating. Um, first of all, CDL. Um, that's a, a question that comes up a lot. When you're towing 37,000 pounds, uh, you, <laughs> you have to have a CDL, CDL just to get in the truck. Yeah, you got a CDL you, plus plus when you get you, up you there. Can't even, <laughs> you can't even touch that truck without that because 26,000 pounds combined is where you re it really comes into play for towing, now, uh, which is true. But you um, know, Ford had 32,000 pounds on RV, a fifth wheel. Yeah, what's so, up with that? Well, that means, well, that's more than, because, you know, Ram went up to 30,000 right yeah, off the bat. But who it, makes a hitch that handles uh, that way? It, it doesn't. But anyway, the point with that is, is if you want to get by without a CDL, pull on a fifth wheel, you're a little more regu undercover. Because regula regulations are different. Yeah, and they think that you're a tourist, you know, out there on the reservation. But, but listen, uh, riddle me this, uh, Mr. Truck. Yeah. If you want to tow a 32,000 pound fifth wheel camper, I don't know if such thing exists because the biggest 45 and 50 footers custom trailers, I think they're approaching 30,000 pounds. That's a very big 50. That's a semi trailer. Yeah, well, they make some of those really high yeah, dollar. 48 foot and 53 feet. Uh, high yeah. dollar fifth wheels, but they're so rare. They're incredibly expensive. I don't know how many people would buy a truck yeah. to tow that. See, they make my point because I'm I'm a big promoter of balls. I like big balls. Excuse me. And the fifth wheels are a kingpin. And it's a loose connection, and so that's what they are, the kingpins. But you notice that with Ram, with Ford, and with Chevy, all of them they'll rate a higher for a gooseneck hitch trailer than they will a fifth wheel. Mm -hmm. So I know the old blue hairs love those fifth wheels. They pretend like they're a semi driver. They get a back into that little V, and they're all so happy. <laughs> But the balls well, more articulate more. They're stronger. Yeah. I mean, I've seen them get Unless, hit by trains and they were hanging by the ball. Really? Yeah, that ball. Really? But anyway, that is is another thing. So we know that the gooseneck ball is a stronger connection. And I mean, you know, it's closer to what a real kingpin is. But anyway, uh, uh, what was the question? Uh, no, nothing. Um, Mike Wolf uh, <laughs> makes a comment here, and I wanted to kind of address it. Ram 5500 tows 43,000 uh, pounds. That's incorrect. Um, I believe that number. Yeah. I believe 43,000 pounds is a GCWR right. combined, combined weight, so truck and truck trailer. And trailer. Yeah. So um, those are the ratings. Um, technically, well, you need to buy a medium-duty truck or a semi truck to tow more than 40,000. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with anything, any other vehicle that can tow that. Well, yeah. Now wait a minute. A Ram or Ford has that single cab F450 that they had some crazy numbers on a two-wheel drive. A couple of years ago, remember what that was? 
I think it was like around 40,000. No, that was also GCW. You sure? Because the 37,000 is, is the highest one that they Ever, have, huh? uh, have had so far. Um, so, um, we, did we miss some other discussion in the chat room? Um, Verbal abuse. Yeah, let's get, let's get to that in a minute. Let's get to Trisha's question real quick. Um, okay. View that one. That's a towing question. And then we'll get to verbal abuse's point. Okay. Okay. So Trish is saying um, we're looking to buy a 20-foot Airstream, which is kind of a smaller Airstream. Uh, the weight is about uh, 37 or 3,800 pounds. Is that loaded weight or is that empty weight? Uh, do you ask all the tough questions? I'm sorry. 540 pounds on the hitch and are looking to for an SUV to tow it. We live in Texas, but travel to the mountains to New Mexico frequently. I also travel the mountains to New Mexico frequently. I'll, I'll be there next week. Uh, the vehicle will be my everyday car. So I think she's talking about like a, what is that, Airstream Nest? No. Um, well, there's a Bambi that's Airstream. the smallest one. By the way, that is unladen weight. So the 37. So it's an empty trailer. Unladen weight. Empty yeah. trailer. Okay, yeah. well, if we knew what the axles were, if they were two fives would be 10,000. We had two 44s would be 88. So I don't if, we, know that. if we knew what the axles were, we could tell her. But if that's a light so, one, then we're just guessing because we don't know how much crap she's going to put in there. If there's going to be ice chests, propane, water, all that stuff. I mean, that's what adds up Yeah, is all the cargo you put in these so trains. She was just wondering which SUV we'd recommend and taking that into account. So I would go mid-sized still because I don't think, because she also needs to use it as their everyday vehicle. Yeah, so yeah. I wouldn't go an expedition because that's, I mean, it's a good towing well, what, choice. What's an Explorer rated at? And For, like, like, like an Atlas. So, so they... Um, so most of the midsizers, like the Explorer, mm -hmm. um, the Atlas, they're between five and six thousand. Okay. So th this actually may work for you. So like a Ford Explorer or an equivalent um, right. in your class. Right. And the reason why I say Ford Explorer is because I recently test drove a 2020 Explorer, yeah. Yeah. Um, and even the hybrid, uh, the new hybrid Explorer, had a really good towing rating at about I think 5,300 pounds. Um, so that's a good option for commuting, but also towing your trailer when you need a little bit of towing. Well, um, yeah, yeah, but what I do want her to do, uh, Trish, is to go out and buy your 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 tongue on your trailer and find that little tag. Your There's tongue? one. Yeah, your your, your trailer tongue. That's yeah. what it's called. It's a tongue. I know. It's a V tongue. Anyway, I know. so uh, you stop getting nasty over there. But anyway, the tongue. There's a sticker that tells you, you your PSI and your trailer tires. There's one that tells you your gross GVW. Gross vehicle weight, that's the maxed out on the trailer. And you know, have the axle weights there too. And you add the two together, and that's really close to what the GVW will be. And then you'll know more about your, your gross. If your gross is five or six, six, you're right on the edge of those of those yep. SUVs. So it'd be better if you're closer to five. And then you do want to have a good weight distributing hitch on an SUV like that, a crossover. Yeah. All right. Are there any so, other comments? Yeah. Uh, I want to get to verbal abuses question because that's a question that we get a lot is can you do a work truck comparison video like have Ford, Ram, and Chevy send their base work trucks and see which is the best? We would love to do that. Yes, and we're doing it slowly. Yes. So the EcoDiesel test uh, 1500 truck was a tradesman. Yeah. That's a work truck. Yeah. It was about 41 grand with the diesel engine and a couple of options. So that was an affordable diesel truck. We're doing another truck, which is a work truck kind of yeah. soon which is a Chevy 2500 uh, Custom. It's a good looking uh, truck too. It, it, it's got a nice look, but it's more affordable. It's one step above work truck. Yeah. So I'm trying really hard to do this. So I really appreciate your interest. It's hard um, to get a bunch of them together though. That's To really get them at the same time yeah. is very hard, yeah. especially because they're kind of coming out in a staggered fashion. So the yeah. 2020 Chevys are available now. Uh, the 2020, well, the 2019 and 2020 Rams are not, well, I'm trying to get one, but they're hard to get. And then the 2020 Fords are not quite, and they're not built yet. Yeah. So they're not quite here yet. So we're trying to do them. Um, I also want to do several other comparisons. I want to do a diesel Rebel uh, versus like a diesel AT4 GMC. Oh, that'd be in a half ton. Yeah. So diesel half ton trucks yeah. for off-roading. That'd be good. Um, and several other tests for Gold Hitch and Gold Winch. So let's stay tuned for that. Also the Tremor. How about the Tremor? That one, yeah, that's probably not going to be January, February, but that that's would be good. That's going to be later. That would be good. Try out that front end, that, that limited slip front end on that. That would be cool. And that yeah. one's, you said there, there is a chart on that that shows you what you can tow with it? Because I, 
I need to look through my chart. I published my With chart. With the tremor? Yeah. It's pretty see. impressive. I have the numbers yeah. in my head. Yeah. Do you want to hear them? Yeah, give me the numbers. Um, so on the tremor, um, it's 15,000 pounds towing uh, on a bumper pull. Okay, on a that's with the diesel or gas? That didn't say. I think it was both. Okay. But their highest number on the tremor is 21,900, which a, was only with a diesel 350. Gooseneck? Yes, that's okay. a gooseneck rating, 21,900 on a tremor well, that's, package. That's respectable. It's certainly not 37. It but will I'm take not. care of most of your toy haulers, well, sure, right? But you know how Chevy made that a statement? With all their dually diesels, they've been all to over 30,000. Correct. So I was asking for that. Do you have something like that? Can we have something that we can remember easily like that? Yes, yes. Did and they I, say anything? No. <laughs> well, they're... You look them up on, let's see, what is like an average 350, maybe a 373 rear end, or even a 14 rear end, dually, crew cab, diesel, the so the maximum F three fifty number for Ford is uh -huh. thirty five thousand seven fifty. Really? They had to better GM by two hundred fifty pounds. Well, that's that's pretty they good. Did. For, yeah. But I don't know. If, wrong with that. I don't know about every configuration. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know that for sure. Yeah. I haven't memorized the entire table. It's, those are pretty big tables. I like that um, with what Chevy did that for all the dualies at least tow thirty thousand, and that's something the public can remember too. Kind of like my my controversy with that two percent crap every thousand feet on the um, Ford. Kevin Reagan is saying um, just one last question: uh, With the diesels um, in the fifteen hundred uh, currently available, are they more or less capable than the gas versions? When you got the horses in the back, or are they strictly <laughs> tuned for efficiency? Uh, well, they're, well, they're trying to they're, actually compromise. Yeah, they're both. That's what I was going to say. They're both. They're trying they, to compromise. Yeah. Because the Ram EcoDiesel is rated up to 12,560. That's very respectable for half time. Oh, my God. Why don't, you, you know. will never tow that much. No, with I'm 12.8 with mine. And, and, and yeah, um, it's, you don't so, need to 13. So thank you for joining us. Um, I think, are you going to be available next week? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm so doing we, some we hitch studies this weekend. I'm doing some tests. Some with, hitch studies? Yeah, with Gen Y. Well, some okay. results on eggs. We're testing out some new hitches. Yes. Yes. So stay tuned, and we'll be we'll be back next week. Uh, Mr. Chuck will uh, anchor the show. I'm on vacation next Thursday. Again? Yeah. Holy cow! How? <laughs> you just got back from Australia. Where the hell are you, are you going to New Mexico? Now? Yeah, I'm going to New Mexico. My gosh. So. Uh, Who do I get to anchor it with? Me, me and the chicken. We can handle it. Yeah. All right. So we're, I'm gonna play us <laughs> out. So thank you guys. Where is this? Oh, here it is. Oh yeah. <laughs>